Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I wanted to just say this as the Lord is just really speaking to my heart and I want to speak to you guys as well. And guys, what we need to realize is that when we stand before the Lord, we're going to stand before him by ourselves and we're going to give an account for the things that we have done. There's not going to be anyone next to you there's not going to be anyone next to me. You will stand before the throne of God by yourself. And then the latter part of the books of Revelation, the book of Revelation, it's Revelation chapter 20. It will tell you how we will stand before the Lord. And when you stand before God, the books, the books will be open. There's going to be the books of the things that you have done through your life, the things that we did. And then there's going to be the book of life. If your name is not in the book of life, then you will not enter into heaven. But the books in it will be found the things that you have done, that we have done, the choices that we made good or bad whether to the glory of God or to the glory of the devil. Yes, sinning and disobedience and insolence, it's giving glory to God because there's only the light devil. and dark. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and 19 says, I call heaven and earth as a witness against you this day. The book of Deuteronomy in the Bible. I have set before you life or death. There's only two things, two things choices we can make on this earth life or death blessings or cursing there's only two things we can choose in this life through our actions god's blessings or cursing and the scripture further goes on to say but choose life that it may be good for you and your descendants the decisions that we make very often can affect the generations to come a lot of times because we will do things and it can open the door for our seed, our children to come up and emulate, do the same thing. Or it just opens a door for the powers of darkness to now try to bring oppression and things on your children. And there are times your children can break out of the generational curse. Some of you, you are experiencing that there's certain habits and things that your family has done and but then you are the difference and then you find yourself being in you know clashing with them because you're stepping out of that well you're stepping out of it and you overcome it through the blood of the lamb but what happens is you're still being bombarded by it because of the doors that were opened by those that were before you, perhaps by your parents, your grandparents. So you still, we can still be faced with these things regardless, even though we're being pulled out of it, you know? So regardless of that, guys, you're going to stand before the Lord by yourself and it is time it is high time for certain individuals to stop comparing themselves and saying, I'm not as bad as this person. I'm not as bad as these groups of people. I'm not doing as much as this person because God is not going to compare you to the next person. He's going to compare you against you. He's going to compare you to, against his principles and his commandments. He's going to compare you and the choices that you made to the things that he gave you. When you heard the gospel, what was your choices? When he spoke to your heart about things that you were doing, what did you do? He's going to ask you certain things. And it's especially, you know, to those who are wealthy, you give an account for what you did with your wealth. And let's be clear. There's no such thing as... Um, you're not going to be able to bargain with God and say, well, Lord, look what I did over here. I know that in this arena, I was doing bad, but look, I made it up over here. You're going to give an account to God 
for the things that you did, what you did with your wealth, what you did with your power, what you did with the authority that you were given, depending on the position that you were in. Some of you, you're in certain positions right now, and yet you're being influenced by people. Some of you, you have lots of money, but you are not being a good steward of that money. Even if you have investments, and even though you have all these things going on, and you have houses and lands, and, co and you have company, and you are a shareholder, and you own your company, you can still be, in the eyes of God, a poor steward of the things that he has given you because you live for yourself. You did things on your term, on your terms, in your conditions. Guys, it is wasteful to have a great big house of which you can only utilize two or three rooms. Why? Because pride is what leads people to purchase things and pride is sin. Pride is one of the seven abominations that God hates. And so there's only three of you and you have 15 bedrooms. And so you'll be accountable for that empty bedroom that somebody could be sleeping in, but you just have it for no reason other than I want to say I can get this place. Guys, let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. You cannot truly, it's not something you need. It is a, it's really a statement of look where I live. Look what I have. And so for the seven bedrooms that no one sleeps in, while there are people sleeping under a bridge, And so what happens is there are people that will, they get these things because I have the money to do that. And that's what is, that's what is poor stewardship in the eyes of God. You just have this just because. And many may compare themselves to the kings and say, well, Solomon had all these great things. You're not Solomon. And Solomon was given great wealth in those things. And Solomon had a huge family. Solomon was a king. He had many wives. Okay? Like, it's like he had an entourage. And it was very different. And Solomon was so good to his servants. And Solomon's desire was not wealth. His desire was just God's wisdom and God blessed him with great wealth because he only wanted the wisdom to know how to, to rule the people. That's all he asked for when the Lord appeared to him. But many people do not have that heart. Their desire, they become greedy, they become wealthy. I'm not saying that they're not people God, that God can bless them. But we're living in times where there are lots of people, guys, that their whole thing is their status. They buy certain houses. They buy certain cars for status. And so people will stand before God for that. How did you handle the blessings that you were given? How did you handle the power and the authority that you were given? Did you help those who were in need did you help those who were being oppressed or did you ensure that you were in, in good, in a, uh, you ensured that your whole, uh, your entire purpose was having a good rapport with those who were wealthy? Did you shut out the poor while you threw a couple shillings here or there to feel better? God sees the heart. You will not be able to compare yourself and say, well, at least I'm not as, I was not as, uh, I was not as chivalrous as this guy or this person, this woman over here. God is going to ask you about you. People, you will stand before God for racism, sexism, uh, 
the bystander attitude, standing by and watching things happen to people. People will stand before God for why you recorded a crime and did not help. People will be held accountable for recording the most horrible moments in someone's life and uploading it for the world to see. People will be standing before God and being held accountable for, for comments that they made about somebody, whether it's about their looks or something that they said. You'll give an account for the pictures that you have put up on Facebook. You'll give an account for the times that you uploaded things to hurt somebody. You knew that somebody's hurting Somebody's going through things and you uploaded and posted pictures to let the person see how much you're having a good time despite the hurt and the pain that they're going through. Guys, sometimes you don't realize how sometimes the, 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 the insensitivity of people just constantly just uploading about themselves how great their life is. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's becoming, it's come to a point where there's nothing that you're not sharing and there are people who are suffering and going through things. And it's like egg in their face, egg in their face. Am I telling you that you should not share your successes? Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is to be mindful of the fact that sometimes there seems to be no sensitivity, no concern about anybody else other than posting about me, 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 me. Racism. Guys, people who hurt and stole from, stole lands from people, they're going to stand before God for that. And it's not going to be like, oh, it was his idea. People that have died, people who have murdered people, police brutality, police officers that's just walking around like, doo, 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 just free. They're going to stand before God and they will be asked about the people that they may have killed, not because, hey, as a police officer, sometimes they have to do that if they're if, if the person's trying to hurt them. But no, because they have the badge and the power, they'll be held accountable for that. People will be standing before the Lord for being racist against people because they're darker than you. The hatred of the black skin, people are going to be held accountable for that. The hatred of anybody whose skin is dark, who looks different, the hatred that people will have or you may have for certain type of people, stereotypes. You just assume everybody, all black people smell like watermelon and, and, and coconuts and that all Africans stink. And that all, 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 all Japanese people are, 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 you know, they all eat rice. I mean, but that is our main dish. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I'm from the islands and I tell you, we go through like two 20 pound bags of rice in like, that's just maybe in six months, seven months, but we are rice eaters. But people will have hatred for the Japanese. They think about the, the wars and, and all of that and, and hate them and hate it. People are going to be held accountable for the stereotypes, the prejudice, the mindsets that they've had. Guys are going to stand before God before that, for, for that. You give an account by yourself for how you dealt with your children. Yes, they were rebellious. Yes, they may have done things that were not right. But God's going to ask you about how you dealt with the situation. In some cultures, there's a thing where the family, while it's respect, there's also, it's very abusive. It's a very selfish, you know, things can happen where the parents could be irresponsible and it's still their children's responsibility to clean up the mess of their parents. And so the children can never really have a life where, you know, they just have a wonderful life with the, the grandparents or their parents because the, the parents are irresponsible and there is an entitled spirit 
that maybe in some cultures where the children are just you're not meant to have any kind of life and yes you must honor your family it's good but they will do things that's wrong the the parents will be doing stuff that is very wrong and so that child cannot have a happy marriage, happy life, because there's a parent in there that's sucking the life out of them and using their authority as a parent as a way of being abusive emotionally, taking from their children, and their children are like servants all their lives. That person's going to stand before God about that. Because guess what? Those parents would have heard messages like this, but they just, they're going to harden their hearts. Oh, how dare you say that? Ah, that's what's wrong with you kind of gen, your generation, your people. But it's not about that respect and honor. Absolutely. But to disrespect your child and treat your child a certain way, your child is just in bondage and unhappy and you, you create debt and it's your children's job to take care of it and they're doing and you continue to be irresponsible, that cannot be right either. Because no matter how old your children get, you still have to carry yourself in a certain way as a parent. That is a role. A parent is not a master or an oppressor. Provoke not your children to wrath. Children will always be your children. So whether they're little or they are older, you do not provoke them and you do not discourage them. Provoke not your children to wrath, lest they be discouraged. There are lots of discouraged grown children. People will be held accountable for that. Guys, we will stand before God for the things that we have done. I will stand before God for the things that I have done. And if you have asked the Lord to forgive you for sins, it's forgotten and it's no more. But if you're a person, you keep asking God to forgive you and you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're not really sorry. And these are things that you have to get before God about now, because through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be delivered from stuff. But you have to take those things seriously to realize I'm in big trouble here. I've got a problem here and I need to get it right. Because if not, you're going to stand before the Lord by yourself for this thing you kept doing. Because it's going to be in the books. And you will not be able to compare yourself, guys. This is what is the problem with humanity. Well, I know that I sleep around, but I'm, at least I'm not, I'm not going through. I don't have, I haven't slept with as many people as he did or as she did. I know that I'm abusive, but at least I'm not as bad as my parents were. I know that I, um, I know that I'm selfish and I do stuff that I shouldn't do. I know that I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm racist and everything, but you know, in another setting, I do help other people. I do donate quite a bit to the local orphanages and or this and this, and I'm not as bad as this person because at least I think in my heart, I just think it, but this person actually acts it out. No, the Lord is going to ask you about your thoughts. So guys, it's so imperative. It is so imperative. It's absolutely imperative that we understand the, the, the level of responsibility and accountability that we're going to be held to that we as that we have right now and when we stand before the judgment seat of God he's going to ask you about stuff guys and you will not be able to compare your wrongs to somebody else's God is going to say it's you and me these are my laws this was my word you heard about the gospel. You heard about Jesus. You heard about this cross. You heard about how much I loved you. You heard about all these things. What did you do with the word? What did you do when you were warned? What did you do when I saved your life and you almost died in the accident and I allowed you to live? What will you do when you pray? What would you say to God? He's going to say, what did you do when you prayed to me and you asked me to deliver you and to help you? And I did. Did you keep your word? 
What did you do? When I continue to tell you to turn away from the sin, this evil way, what did you do when I told you that you need to apologize to your mother, to your father, to your sister, to that cashier at the register that you, you went, you, you completely insulted them? What did I tell you about your behavior to the staff, the wait staff in the restaurant? What did you do every time? What did I tell you about your behavior when you go to resorts and how you are so disrespectful and so unkind to the staff? What did I tell you about that? What did I tell you? What did you do when you saw that homeless person on the corner? What did you do? Why did you call the police on this person who already lives nowhere and they're not harming anybody? The Lord will remind us of these moments. What did you do? When your wife was crying and you were walking out the door and leaving her alone, what did you do when your husband was asking you to, to hear him out and you, you walked out and you did not listen to him or you allowed another person, your parents, your family to influence your decisions with your husband? What did you do? How did you treat your child when they don't understand their homework? Did you get the belt? And put fear in your child? Were you impatient? What names did you call your child because they couldn't grasp their, their, their lessons? When you call them stupid and you call them dumb and you slap them because they didn't know the answer. Do you not think that I did not see that? You'll have to account for all the wounds that you place in that child. And now they may have a fear of learning. Or they believe that they're stupid and they're dumb. And you're wondering why they're not reaching for higher things in life. Because of the seeds that's been planted in them. But the Lord would say, what, what did you do when, I, when it pricked your heart when you first hit them? But what happened? You start to get used to it and you override it. What did you do when I told you to curb your anger? That's all that's going to matter. You'll be compared to your actions and the choices that you made to the word of God. You're going to be reminded of the choices that you made when you disobey God. You're going to be measured against what he placed for you to do. You'll be measured against the word. You'll be reminded of the times God spoke to your heart. You've been reminded of this video that you watched because God speaks to us in many ways in our heart through other people, through other mediums, other mediums meaning other modes, through the Bible, through the book. I mean, through the Bible, through a book, through a sign, through videos, through just a person, through your children, they may say something to you. But guys, God is going to, God is going to, you're going to stand before the Lord by yourself and be talking to him by yourself. It's not going to be, I'm not as bad as this person. I wasn't teenagers. You're not going to be able to stand before God and say, well, Lord, at least I, I was going to choir practice. God is going to ask you, did I not tell you to stop doing this? Did I not tell you to stop doing that? Did I not tell you to listen to your mother or listen to your father? Did I not tell you to, you stood there and was... Someone was being bullied and you were going along with a bully, even though in your heart you felt sorry for the person, you knew it was wrong. You still was following along with this person. You're going to stand before God for that as a teenager. Because you're at an age of accountability. And the biggest mistake that we can ever make, guys, is think God is some hush puppy. This little old man that you're just going to be able to pat him on the head and say, come on, let me in, man. Stop playing. You're not going to be able to do that. We're being given, a lots, being given lots of grace and mercy right now. Because, guys, it's that serious. All the time that we're being given right now, it's that serious. Eternal damnation is that serious. God's judgment is that serious. You're not going to be able to stand before God and say, Lord, all you gave me was 32 years to get it right. Listen to that for a second. When we stand before the Lord, we are going to be compared against no one. So stop comparing yourself and stop measuring yourself against what others are doing compared to what you're doing. Because God is one God. The only thing God is going to ask you, did you do what I told you to do? 
And so there are things that you suffer and you struggle with because sin is oppressive, but fun at the same time. And so, guys, what you have to do is make up in your mind. You must realize what you are risking through sinning, through being indifferent to people, through racism, sexism, discrimination, and stereotypes. If there's a group of people that you know you've never liked them, you were raised to think a certain way about people, you need to pray and ask the Lord to reprogram your mind so that you can see people through his eyes. It's not something that happens immediately, but it can happen. You need to pray and ask the Lord to help you that you realize that your soul is in the balance and that when we leave this world, then we really start to live. Eternity begins and you don't want to find yourself hearing Depart from me. I never knew you. You don't want to be where all you're hearing is bad news and 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 the things that you could have been the things you could have overcome right now. It'll be over and over in the books how many times you kept doing the same thing over and over again and asking God to forgive you and doing it again. All things are possible through the Holy Spirit. And you must be willing to repent and turn to the Lord and say, I am sorry. You can say to him, Father, come into my heart. I want you as my Lord and Savior. Teach me your way. Show me, oh God, how to know you. Help me to stop doing the things that I'm doing. Guys, you don't touch a hot surface twice. You don't go and touch a hot iron twice. You don't keep putting your hand in the oven. If you your hand touches the oven by accident, you're just like, ah, you pull back. And that's why whenever you turn on an oven or anything that's hot, you're absolutely careful. You're absolutely mindful of how you do things because you know the danger of it. And so, therefore, you must live that way. You must have that same mindset when it comes to your soul. You must be mindful of how you're living and the choices that you are making. Because you and I should be at a point where we know the dangers of indulging in the ways of the world, allowing ourselves to become drunk on the ways and the things of this world. Always remember this. You cannot compare yourself to anyone else but you. You're going to because God is not going to ask you about anybody but yourself. The books are are going to be opened up and it's going to be all about the choices and the things that you made. And you will either, you will either hear, enter into eternal life, well done, or depart from me. And then you are now going to enter into the lake of fire, which is the second death, but it's not death because in there, it's just, guys, The lake of fire will have a life of its own and it has an assignment to torment those who chose to disobey God and to mock God or whatever they did. There is hell, which is a place now where souls, disobedient souls are there experiencing it, but they're in holding for the judgment. That's not even the end, guys. And then there's a judgment and then there's where they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. Death will be thrown into the lake of fire. Hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. Satan and the, the false prophet. False prophet, not false prophets, false prophet is a spirit in which many false prophets operate. These people that's talking about some of them that's saying the Lord said, the Lord said there, many of them are not of God. Read it for yourself, the false prophet. They're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And so those whose names have not been found in the book of life will also be thrown in there. It does not have to be you. And God does not want to use fear for anybody to turn to him, but a desire to spend eternity with him. And the Lord can help you with that. He can help you if you want it. Yes, the enemy will fight you. But at the same time, he is over. He is already overcome. He's already defeated. So it's a choice. Do you want what's in this world and all that there is to offer in this world? Or do you want to be a part of the new heaven and the new earth? Because what's in this world and all that's in it is going to pass away. It's temporary. So compared to what you give up now in this life, it's nothing to be compared to what the Lord has in store for us.
many people will think that Jesus is, you know, is, he's not real. But if you know anything about your history, Jesus is historically proven. He's in history books, historians, archaeologists. They can show you that Jesus existed and walked on this earth. He is a proven historical fact. He was crucified. There's proven historical fact to show that. He died on the cross. Absolutely. And people believe that's it. He did not raise up. But ask yourself, where's the body of Jesus? If he was just a man and he was just a nobody and he was just a man, we can send satellites into the deep, deep parts of space. We can find everything. We've, we've dug up, exhumed. Well, people have. I'm not taking no responsibility of zooming the dead. But they've exhumed pharaohs and dinosaurs and found pieces of the Titanic and great treasures in the deep, deep oceans. National Geographics have gone to the very, 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 very deep areas of the ocean and discovered some half human, half fish looking things. There's a people that feel like it wasn't real or whatever. Okay. I'm not going to say it's not because the Bible talks about lots of things in the deep parts of the water. That we know not of. To include Leviathan. But they can go that far. But no one can find the body of Jesus. Not a bone. Not a finger. not No phalanges. Nothing. Because he's risen guys. And there's no way that people. The apostles that walk with Jesus. The disciples that were walking with Jesus. If they supposedly took and hid his body, then they would have realized, okay, he's a phone. He, he wasn't real. He was a man just like us. And they would not have allowed themselves to be filleted, alive, beheaded, eaten by lions. They would have said, well, we believed in him. It turns out he wasn't, he wasn't what he proclaimed to be. He was a good guy, but turns out he was human. They would just go back to their normal life. They were crucified for his sake. They were flogged for his sake. They were beaten for his sake. Why would they do that for a dead person? Why are people, Christians right now, in places of being beheaded and stoned to death and tortured for the gospel? Because they have, and they have experienced the power of God just like I have. And so, guys, you can choose God and choose eternal life. Or you can choose to live however you want to live. But you got to own that. You got to own that. And realize at the end of it all. All the comparisons that you've been making. About how much better you are than the next person. And all the reasoning and the rationalizing. All of that is going to just be gone when you stand before God. He's only going to ask you, did you do as I told you to do? Did you use your gifts and your talents as I told you to use them? Did you use them for my glory? Your power and the authority that you were given in this earth and the position that you were in. Not because you were so fantastic, but I gave you the knowledge to be able to go to school and to be able to retain knowledge and to be able to move forward and to go up and to be successful. What did you do? What did you do with that? Do you understand? So guys, I'm going to end this video here and say, you will stand before God and you'll be compared to no one else but yourself. All right, guys.